What's with that look? People earning 30,000 a year are just poor. Get lost. You have a scary face. The jealousy of poor people is frightening. That's right. Since you're already here at the office, why not apply for welfare, you bottom dweller? At the office I had visited for some errands. I encountered my ex-husband Tommy and his wife Catherine. They both kept ridiculing me. Did they think I'd cry and go home? I'd never give in to them. Without flinching at their abusive words, I opened my mouth to respond to them. Huh? 30,000 is just my monthly income, though? What? Both of them exclaimed in a comically surprised tone at my words. 30,000 a year? Come on, we're not talking about the old Tommy. As I laughed loudly, Tommy turned red and tried to argue back. The two of them kept obsessing over me. I was finally about to give them their comeuppance. My name is Lisa, and I'm 50 years old. I'm a divorcee currently running a cooking school. I married my then-husband Tommy when I was 26. We had a daughter, Emma. We were just an ordinary family that could be found anywhere. Tommy was a company employee, working seriously every day. But he was short-tempered and prone to anger. He held male-dominant beliefs. And would sometimes make derogatory remarks towards me and Emma. But to put it positively, his strong belief that he, as a man, had to be responsible, was stronger than anyone else's. At the beginning of our marriage, I felt a lack of manliness and reliability in Tommy. Yet our family lived modestly but happily. My meeting with Tommy was through a common occurrence. An introduction by a senior colleague at work. Concerned about me, who hadn't mentioned having a boyfriend even after turning 25. My senior thought it was worrying. To be honest, I wasn't very attracted to the idea of marriage. I was more interested in working than getting married. At that time, not many people thought like me. And many believed that quitting their job for marriage was a woman's happiness. Moreover, every time my parents contacted me, they started to press the issue of marriage. Being away from my parents' home due to work. I also wondered if getting married would reassure them. That's when I met Tommy, and somehow I started to consider him as a potential marriage partner. It seems Tommy was having similar doubts at the time. Everyone around me is getting married, and my parents keep nagging about marriage. Honestly, I'm not interested in marriage. But if I were to marry, I'd like it to be with someone like Lisa. One day, Tommy told me that. We weren't deeply in love. But I thought we could be good partners for each other since our views on marriage were similar. And so, less than a year after meeting, we decided to get married, but we really had no money. Both Tommy and I had been living alone before our marriage, so we hardly had any savings. As a result, our wedding was really just a small meal with close family members. We couldn't afford a new home. So our married life began with Tommy moving into the apartment where I lived. Because of our situation, I intended to continue working after marriage, as expected. Tommy had agreed to this before our marriage, but once we were married, he started to have difficulties with the idea of me working. This happened a while after we got married. So? When is Lisa going to quit her job? That question came out of the blue. I was taken aback and responded. What? I'm planning to keep working. That's what we talked about. But if you work, won't people think my earnings are insufficient? Normally, Everyone quits their job after getting married, right? Lisa, you should do the same. It was such a turnaround from our discussions before marriage that I wanted to ask what all that was for. Frustrated with Tommy suddenly saying this, I spoke up. Why? It's a fact we're out of money, right? You were okay with me continuing to work. But, you know, my manager and chief think you've already quit. 
I can't just say I'm making you work. I was dumbfounded. Tommy told his superiors that I had quit for some reason of pride. Today, it's not unusual for both spouses to work. However, back then, it wasn't as easy for women to work as it is now. Influenced by others. Tommy started to find it ridiculous for me to work and began forcing me to resign. He even involved his parents, turning it into a family-wide opposition against me working. You'll have children eventually. And it's pitiful to leave them in daycare to work. Quit your job already. Tommy's telling you the same, right? A woman's best role is to take care of the home. Despite living far away, my mother-in-law irresponsibly threw such words at me. I never agreed to quit my job, but surrounded by opposition, I ended up confined to the house. However, this didn't mean Tommy's salary increased. Our reduced income directly impacted our lives. All I could do was cut down on living expenses. With only Tommy's salary to live on, we had to save rigorously. This is dinner? Just this? Before payday, Tommy would sometimes give a strained smile upon seeing the modest meal. Can't help it. We're out of money for the month. But I'm working. I'm eating for both of us. I have to work for both of us. Sometimes, saying that Tommy would even snatch my side dishes. He also took pocket money from the household expenses. Saying it's embarrassing to be out of money in public. I couldn't even consult with anyone about this, feeling too ashamed. Tommy forbade me from borrowing money from my parents. Saying it would be shameful to admit we were out of money. Of course, I couldn't spend on my cosmetics or clothes. Even in such a state, Tommy wouldn't let me work, which only added to my stress. As I was considering divorce, Tommy, realizing this, said, If we have a child, you won't have to think about unnecessary things. Despite our financial difficulties, he suggested having a child. If I got pregnant under these circumstances, it would be a disaster for our finances. Despite my opposition, saying it was too early, I eventually got pregnant. Making it difficult to both work and think about divorce. Still, I found our daughter Emma very adorable. Fortunately, without any major illnesses, Emma grew up healthily. With age, Tommy's salary increased a bit. Although still below average, I had gotten used to saving money. As a full-time housewife, I could attend all of Emma's kindergarten and school events. Despite many hardships and sacrifices, we finally achieved a normal life. And I was relieved until one day. Maybe it's time for you to start working again? Staying cooped up at home will age you fast. I was speechless at Tommy's casually muttered words. What do you mean? When we were struggling financially. You said it was shameful for me to work, and now you're telling me to get a job? Tommy bristled at my spontaneous response. What, you don't want to work? Being a full-time housewife is just being lazy. I was stunned at his harsh words. It's not that I didn't want to work. It's just that I couldn't stand Tommy's attitude and words. The wife of the chief who just transferred here works even. After getting married and having kids. She's always well-dressed. And you, Lisa, don't you feel pathetic about yourself? What kind of face was he making while saying that? Had he forgotten what he had told me? Although I had so much to say, Emma was nearby, so I desperately held back. All right. I'll find some job. I told Tommy this, barely concealing my frustration. He seemed to smile as if he had one. Then, I started a part-time job nearby. I worked as a cook at a supermarket. At that time, Emma was in the upper grades of elementary school. Even though she was getting older, she was still a primary schooler. She needed close attention, and there were household chores to do. Adding work to that, I struggled to manage everything at first and was exhausted every day. 
Tommy remained unchanged even seeing my condition. Why are you so tired from just a part-time job? Be like me. He said that arrogantly every day. Working full-time and juggling a job with housework and parenting are entirely different things. I recall not being this tired when I worked full-time and only had to care for myself. It's just part-time, but I have household duties too. Can you help a little? Even just looking over Emma's homework would be a big help. I said this to Tommy, but he didn't try to cooperate. Homework? That's a mother's job. Then, at least help with washing the dishes? You want me to do housework when I'm tired from work? Housework is a woman's job. No matter what I asked, he pushed everything onto me. Using the excuse of me being a mother or a woman. I gave up expecting anything from Tommy due to his selfish behavior. Then, one day, after about three years since I started working, Emma fell ill. Initially, we didn't know the cause and went to many hospitals. Of course, I took time off from my part-time job during this period, desperately caring for Emma. But even as I struggled for Emma, Tommy's reaction was cool. Isn't she just faking to avoid school? Don't take time off from your part-time job. Your salary will decrease. In front of a visibly ill Emma, Tommy showed no concern, simply drinking beer. Eventually, Emma's illness turned out to be non-life-threatening. But she needed regular hospital visits for some time. Having been frequently absent from my part-time job and now needing more time off, I couldn't inconvenience them further and ultimately resigned. Tommy became furious and started berating me for quitting. Can't you even keep a part-time job? It was just for three years. I feel bad about resigning. But what choice did I have? What choice? You just wanted to go back to the comfortable life of a full-time housewife, didn't you? No matter how much I explained Emma's condition and our situation, Tommy showed no empathy. Instead, he kept pressuring me to work. Feeling depressed by my inability to work and Tommy's verbal abuse. I knew I had to do something. Then one day, Emma said, Mom, I'm sorry you had to quit your job because of me. I was shocked. I knew Tommy's words reached Emma's ears. But I didn't realize they made her feel this way. Filled with regret and resolve, I knew I had to prove it wasn't Emma's fault. It's not your fault, Emma. But I'm happy you're at home. I want you to stay home all the time, like before. Emma. I pondered my options and then it struck me, working from home. However, my options were limited. After some thought, I decided to start a cooking class at home. I had always been confident in my cooking skills. With experience living alone and working as a supermarket cook, I had a decent repertoire. Plus, my three years at the supermarket allowed me to earn a chef's license. Thus, I smoothly started my cooking class. Emma was very happy about the cooking class. However, Tommy only mocked it. You think you can succeed on your own? Who would pay to learn cooking from you? Stop struggling in vain and get a proper job, you shut in. Tommy complained constantly as I prepared for the class. But I didn't give up. I believed that if it went well, even Tommy might change his mind. But it didn't start well. Finding students was not easy. Even those who came for a trial did not always return, playing right into Tommy's expectations. As expected, he continued to ridicule me. Get a proper job already. It was easy for him to say. But considering Emma's medical appointments and unexpected illnesses, it was difficult. Tommy had no intention of accompanying Emma to the hospital. Making it hard for me to work outside. Despite my struggles, I continued the cooking class. Eventually, a couple of students began attending regularly. Your cooking is popular with my family. My child doesn't like vegetables, but they ate the dish you taught us. 
such wonderful students they were, even bringing friends. And after about a year, the cooking class finally took off. Emma was very happy, but Tommy remained indifferent. I could feel that he still looked down on me, and his words became fewer and fewer. About five years later, the cooking class was doing well, though slowly. Emma's illness resolved with growth, and she only needed annual checkups. We were not very wealthy, but we were living happily without any problems. Contrary to that, my relationship with Tommy had grown cold. I could strongly feel his displeasure at my success, and I had nothing more to say to him. I had thought we would be good partners when we married, but things don't always go as planned. Despite everything, we were a couple that had come this far together. I thought we would continue living our lives in this detached way into our old age. Then, one day, Emma, now in high school, came home from school with a troubled look. What's wrong? Did something happen at school? When I asked her, Emma spoke with a serious expression. I saw dad walking with a woman I don't know. Your dad? Was she someone from work? What's the matter with that? No, it wasn't like that. They were arm in arm. They seemed close. When I heard those words, I felt as if the blood had drained from my head. I immediately understood it was an affair, but I wasn't shocked by that. I was hurt that Emma had to witness such a scene. It might be a misunderstanding. I'll talk to your dad about it. Yeah, I'm sorry for bringing this up. No, don't be. Thank you for telling me, even though it was hard. It's not your fault, so don't worry about it. I comforted Emma with a smile, but inside I was seething with anger. That night, sensing the mood, Emma went to her room early. Is Emma going to sleep already? That's early. Tommy said this casually. After a while, I decided to bring up the main topic. By the way, Emma said she saw you walking with a woman. Me with a woman? It must be a misunderstanding. Tommy answered with a faint smile, but I didn't miss the way his eyes darted around. I'll forgive you if you tell me the truth. I said, glaring at him. There's nothing to tell. Tommy hesitated to speak. But seeing my unrelenting glare, he laughed defiantly, as if resigning to his fate. Well, I'm popular, after all. Maybe something like that did happen. Don't be ridiculous. Do you realize Emma is hurt by this? What are you thinking? What's your problem? Always nagging about money. Turning our house into a cooking class, or whatever. I have no place or comfort in this house. What's wrong with seeking comfort elsewhere? I was speechless at his words. True, running a class at home may have caused some inconvenience. But Tommy and my students never crossed paths. Even after the classes, he mocked their absence as if he was oblivious to their presence. Let alone feeling uncomfortable due to the class. The financial troubles weren't new, and partly his fault. Yet he used it to justify his affair and hurt Emma. However, the income from the cooking class alone wasn't enough for Emma and me. Knowing I had to endure, Tommy added insult to injury. If you're unhappy, let's divorce. I continued this marriage feeling sorry for you. But divorcing you and marrying her is for my happiness. Wait. Emma's education costs are coming up. Earn it with your cooking class. Well, let's get a divorce. Saying this, Tommy brought home a divorce application the next day. I was discarded. Not just me, but also Emma, his daughter. I demanded child support and education costs for infidelity. Reluctantly, Tommy agreed, so I consented to the divorce. However, I never received those payments, leading to more struggles with finances. Yet, even as a single mother, I never forgot to smile, supporting and living alongside Emma. Those days were filled with hardship, but the misfortune didn't last forever. 
A few years after the divorce, Emma, now a working adult, decided to get married. She lives far away due to her job. I visited the municipal office to get a copy of the family register for her marriage registration. That's when I heard a familiar, mocking voice. Hey, isn't that the teacher? A voice full of mockery. I looked over and, as expected, it was Tommy. Are you still running your cooking class? His words, mixed with politeness, felt even more mocking. I turned away sharply. Then, the woman beside Tommy laughed. Tommy? That's rude. She's your ex-wife, right? Yeah. Thanks to her agreeing to the divorce, I could marry Catherine. I should be grateful. The woman called Catherine seemed to be the mistress Emma had seen. She showed no remorse for getting involved with a married man. Not only did Tommy not pay the alimony, but there was also no apology. Besides Tommy, Catherine looked down on me, seemingly wealthy. I involuntarily noticed the brand bag in her hand. Realizing this, Tommy laughed even more mockingly. Catherine's parents own a company. You must be envious of this bag, right? You could never afford it. I'm not envious at all. Pretending to be strong is pointless. How much are you earning now? About 10,000 a year? It seems Tommy's ego is inflated with Catherine's wealth. 3. I answered briefly. Oh, 3. Not bad. But with a 30,000 income, you can't afford decent food, can you? Tommy continued to loudly mock me. I wondered why he was so intent on bothering me. I glared fiercely at Tommy. What's with that look? People earning 30,000 a year are just poor. Get lost. You have a scary face. The jealousy of poor people is frightening. That's right. Since you're already here at the office, why not apply for welfare, you bottom dweller? Catherine joined Tommy in mocking me. They probably thought I'd cry and go home, but I had no intention of giving in to them. Unfazed by their insults, I opened my mouth to respond. Huh? 30,000 is just my monthly income, though? What? 30,000 a year? Come on, we're not talking about the old Tommy. I said it out loud and laughed. Tommy, as expected, turned red and snapped at me. What? Back then. Back then? You were always around 30,000 until our divorce. Struggled being married to a pretentious poor man. Tommy, clearly not expecting to be talked back to, was shaking comically. It's good for you now, married to a lady riding on her parents' coattails. Did you just call me an old lady? Catherine seemed offended by my words and glared at me. Yes. You're only a bit younger than me, right? It's ridiculous to rely on your parents just because they own a company at your age. Do you even work? At my question, Catherine fell silent. Tommy had nothing to say either. It seemed they were living off Catherine's parents' money without working. Realizing this, I couldn't help but laugh. It must be hard for parents to support grown-up men and women. Poor parents, even if they are company presidents. What did you say? Tommy, infuriated, almost raised his hand at me. But seemed to realize the consequences of such an action in public and reluctantly lowered it. Lying old woman, earning 30,000 a month, don't interfere in other people's affairs. Ho, oh, it's not a lie. Besides, you were the one who started interfering in my affairs, weren't you? How can an old woman like you earn 30,000 a month? Tell me how. With a smile, I began to speak. Do you cook, Catherine? Cooking? That's what the maid does. Don't compare me with the poor. Our maid makes exquisite truffle burdock rice, and we use vegetables from our company. 
Catherine laughed triumphantly, but my smile grew wider. I see. What's with that creepy smile? I'm delighted you like the recipes I created. Hearing this, both were taken aback. After my divorce from Tommy, I continued my cooking class. However, it was not enough to sustain a living. I decided to close the class, but my students, refusing to let me quit, brought many new participants. People started recommending others, and three months after the divorce, my classes became so popular that it was hard to get a reservation. We want more people to know about your cooking. A student working at a publishing house suggested I publish a cookbook. The first one targeted housewives. Thanks to many sharing it on social media, the book sold incredibly well in this digital age. I also wrote books on toddler-friendly recipes. Remembering the snacks I made with Emma in kindergarten. And budget recipes from my harder times. Recently, I published books with slightly more upscale recipes, catering to various culinary genres. Among my recipes, the truffle burdock rice using mushrooms and truffle salt became particularly popular, with various adaptations buzzing on social media. I'm confident Catherine's maid must have seen it and decided to make it. It's not something a regular person would easily think of. You came up with that. Yes, that's right. I'm glad so many people are enjoying it. Catherine was speechless. She might have realized if she had made it herself. But it seems she only bragged about having it made for her. She had no idea I was the creator. Unable to say anything, both she and Tommy fell silent. Probably realizing my monthly income of 30,000 wasn't a lie. Well, I'm busy, so I'll be going. Their earlier bravado was gone. I left them deflated as I finished my errands and left the office. However, that evening, another incident occurred. Tommy came to visit my house. I continued living in the same apartment since I kept running the cooking class after the divorce. Regretting not moving, I went to the entrance to meet Tommy. Ah. Uh. About earlier, sorry. Greeting Tommy at the door, his smirking face gave me a bad feeling. What do you want? Well, you know, I supported and helped with your cooking class, right? We haven't done any property division, and it's late, but I think we should split the money properly. My bad feeling was right. Tommy had come, aiming for my money. What are you talking about? I don't remember you ever supporting me. My only memory of Tommy was of being continuously ridiculed. There was no support from him. And what property division are you talking about? Look, you have money, right? We didn't split it when we divorced, so we should divide it now. I was exasperated by his words. I couldn't understand why he thought he had any right to my money. Yeah, is Emma here? She must be grown up now. She might want to see me, right? Tommy, still in high spirits, tried to peek inside. I blocked him by closing the door. Emma isn't here. Eh? She lives far away. She's getting married soon. Upon hearing this, Tommy's eyes lit up. Part of me wondered if he was genuinely happy for Emma, while the other part doubted it. Who's she marrying? Is he rich? Well, he's serious about his work. Good for her. Like father, like daughter, a beauty easily marrying into wealth. Women have the easy way out with marriage. I resisted the urge to slap him. I had been let down by him so many times before. What about the wedding? I should keep my schedule open. Despite everything, Tommy seemed to assume he'd be attending the wedding. I don't know about that, but if you want to meet Emma's future husband. They're coming over this weekend. You can come and greet them then. Tommy nodded happily at my suggestion. He and Catherine were already planning to visit to pick up the family register and have a meal. After saying he'd come again, 
Tommy left. I sighed as I watched him go. On the weekend, Tommy unexpectedly arrived with Catherine. Catherine, a complete outsider, was brought in without a clear purpose. Emma and her fiancé, Alex, already present, frowned upon seeing them. Why is dad here? And with this woman? Isn't it terrible to say that when we're meeting after so long? You're getting married, right? Tommy greeted Emma cheerfully, but she looked at me, wanting to say something. I smiled slyly and introduced them to Alex. Alex, this is Emma's father, my ex-husband Tommy, and his current wife, Catherine. Nice to meet you. Emma had already told Alex about her father and my divorce. Alex didn't seem to think highly of them. While Alex greeted them awkwardly, I continued. You know, we didn't divide our assets during the divorce. I haven't received any child support either. Well, well, let's not talk about that today. No, it's perfect. Alex is a lawyer. With Catherine here, I wanted to discuss things properly. Catherine's eyes widened at this, and she looked at Tommy for help. Emma smirked, realizing the real reason I invited Tommy. Child support. I've heard about the situation. Based on the cases I've handled, in your mother-in-law's case, you could easily get 10,000. 10,000. Catherine raised her voice in panic. Naturally, being wealthy but not working herself. She'd probably have to ask her parents for the money. Tommy, frustrated, interjected. Just deduct it from the property division and give it to me. I couldn't help but laugh at Tommy's continued absurdity. Alex, puzzled, clarified. Property division? I heard you didn't have any money at the time of the divorce. I didn't have it then, but she does now. Property division is about the assets formed during the marriage. Alex patiently explained to Tommy. At the time of divorce, there was only about 3,000 in savings. So, by simple calculation, you owe her 1,500. What? I felt a bit relieved as things didn't go as Tommy expected. He had taken all the savings when we divorced. Alex, I'd like you to handle the payment. Can you take care of it? I formally asked Alex in front of them. Tommy and Catherine looked at each other, turning pale. Later, a formal demand was made, but unsurprisingly, there was no payment. I didn't want to burden Alex or Emma anymore, so I decided to take the final step. I think it's time to terminate the contract. I notified the fruit and vegetable company. I had been collaborating with that I intended to terminate our contract. This company has been supplying all the vegetables for my published recipes since the release of my books. The meal kits, which included vegetables used in my recipes, were also selling well. This contract constituted a significant portion of the company's revenue, benefiting both of us. I decided to end the contract because of Tommy and Catherine. Predictably, the company's president and vice president came to see me immediately. Was there any mistake on our part? Your meal kits are still very popular, and we expect continued sales. Terminating the contract now would be. Both the president and the vice president looked troubled. As they pleaded for the continuation of our contract. I'm grateful for your help and appreciate your company, but I no longer wish to be involved. I firmly stated my position, and they nervously sought a reason. I then revealed the truth to them. Specifically, I no longer wish to be involved with your daughter. Catherine, the vice president's sister. Yes, the company I had a contract with was Catherine's family business. And she was the wife of Tommy. Initially, I had no idea about this connection. However, clues like Catherine mentioning vegetables from our company and being the president's daughter made me suspect. There aren't many fruit and vegetable companies in the area. Checking the contract, I found Catherine's name in the company's records. 
Catherine didn't work, and it was clear she was just a nominal officer. I knew the vice president had a sister and realized the family connection. I struggled with how to reconcile this fact. But Tommy and Catherine continued to be insincere towards me. I decided it was unfair for me to keep up my end of the deal. I explained the situation to the president and vice president. I can't believe it. Catherine's husband is Ms. Lisa? She did such an outrageous thing. The president and vice president were profusely apologetic, their faces pale. I'm sorry. We'll remove Catherine from the board of directors. And, Dad, you need to take responsibility for spoiling Catherine. Indeed. Ms. Lisa, I'm deeply sorry for what my daughter has done. Consequently, the president resigned. Catherine's name was removed from the board, and her financial support was cut off. That Lisa running the cooking class here is a terrible old woman. Catherine ranted outside my apartment for days. Which led to the entire incident being exposed online. The fruit and vegetable company faced a crisis, but I re-established my contract. Impressed by the vice president's character and response. He kept apologizing, but thanks to him, I finally received the child's support. Tommy and Catherine's fate needs no explanation. They, not working, faced a life of poverty, abandoned by their family. And living in a cramped apartment. I learned of this from Emma, who contacted me. Dad asked me for money. Of course, I refused. Unable to rely on anyone, it was pitiful that he resorted to begging his daughter for money. He's working at a day laborer's factory now. He should have stayed at his company. He got carried away, thinking he became rich by marrying her. Emma laughed heartily, and I was finally able to laugh too. Tommy had always caused me anger, but now I felt he had received his just desserts. I know the hardships of living without money. Now, I hope Tommy experiences that hardship himself. My work continued to thrive. I even started posting recipe videos on a video sharing website, thanks to Emma's suggestion. Bringing happiness to people with my cooking is my greatest joy. Emma is expecting a baby soon. I'm thinking of creating a recipe book for delicious baby food.